What up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Drigo. I do corporate filmmaking, and today I'm going to roll. So I actually shot two YouTube videos. If you didn't watch the first one, you can watch it here. Or if you want to just keep watching this one, then great. So today I'm going to talk to you about uh, setting up meetings with your clients. What should you be doing in these meetings? How should it go? So I know with COVID, not a lot of meetings are happening you know, face-to-face, -face, but when they are happening face-to-face, -face, this is something I want you guys to keep in mind uh, to have a really good meeting. First of all, use Google Calendar. Let's get right to it. Use Google Calendar to, you know, coordinate the meeting. This way you send an invitation to your client. You put the address in there where the meeting is going to happen. They accept it, all of that, you know, where it's, where it's going to be at. So that day when you get in your car, you open up Google Map or your Google Calendar and you hit on Google Maps and it shows you where to go. So uh, 15 minutes is 50, showing up 15 minutes early. That's on time. Uh, you never really want to show up right on time or you're late. It's not a good look. Uh, when you do get there, most likely the receptionist is going to offer you, you know, coffee, tea, whatever. You want to say yes. I know it's very, um, you know, contrary to a lot of beliefs. You don't want to bother them or impose. But just think about it like this. If, you know, if I came to your house and, you know, you're trying to be very, you know, accommodating to me. Like, hey, can I get you something to drink? And I'd be like, no, nah, I'm good. It, it kind of has you like, you know, let me offer you something. Let's, let's build a connection on something. So this way somebody's doing nice, something nice for you. You're, you know, being receptive of that. You start building a connection. You know, you don't want to create no signals between you and your clients and the people you work with. You want to be in the mindset of, yes, what can I do for you? Yes, what can they do for you? So probably going to hang out for a little bit. I'll bring, always bring a pen if you're going to the meetings, something that you can take notes in. I do everything on my cell phone just because my handwriting is horrible, uh, but you know, if I have my computer, I'll do that. If I got to take notes, even if you just got to sign something, always having a pen for meetings and interviews is essential. Uh, do a little bit of research on the people that you're going to meet. You know, there's a lot of information online about a lot of people. Be aware about these people. Look into the past of how they've done videos before. You want to have some sort of talking points to bring up to the client. So this last meeting that I had with this organization you know, they shot videos before in the past, but, you know, they weren't happy with the person that they used. So when we were talking about their new video, something I brought up to them was like, hey, what is it about your last video that you liked? What is it about your last video that I didn't that you didn't like? What do you want to make sure you don't see again? These are all tools and questions that you can use to have really smart and great interviews with clients and understand what is what is your pain point. Right. Because if you can make sure to not make the same mistakes as the past, you know, uh, vendors it's it's a really good look for you so you want to be you know aware of that um and then the next thing maybe the last thing honestly is that you know i always tend to ask tons of questions but the last and most important question that you have to remember out of all of this is when you're in the end of that meeting you have to be like hey uh is there anything that oh, how do i put this so is there any based on our meeting today is there anything that wouldn't make as a right candidate for this project and you just have to be quiet let them respond first and what this is doing is making them just think to themselves is there something that we didn't like about this maybe they're like well we don't think that you're experienced enough you'd be like well okay well that's a great great question we, we might not have you know not we might have not been in business for 20 years but we bring a brand new fresh perspective to a lot of different things because there's always, there's always ways for you to be able to rebuttal certain things. But if you're not asking the questions to get those rebuttals, it's a lot harder to do that over email. So, you know, being able to ask them that question right then and there really allows you to have some sort of leverage between you and the client when you're actually trying to close that deal. And the last most important thing is going to be, you know, asking for that business. Like, what is it? You know, that's great. I'm glad I was able to answer for that. Uh, I was able to answer that question for you. What do we need to do? What's left today for us to be able to sign this deal or close this deal today? And, you know, that's going to be it. You got to ask for the business. I've done this mistake when I was starting out and I seen the situation a lot of different times. Is, you know, people are afraid to go and ask for the money. You have to do it. So that's going to be it for today. Uh, you know, I had these two video ideas in my head for a while, but I've been waiting a really long time to put them together. And then today I was just like, whatever, let me put these up. I think this is valuable information for you guys. I put it on my Instagram and I got a lot of good feedback from it. So I wanted to share that with my YouTube community. So if you're new here, hit the subscribe. If you've been here, if you found this valuable, hit the like button. Leave a question about what is it that you want to learn. And then uh, see you guys next time. Peace.